Hello all, welcome back to Career with Vasant YouTube channel. My name is Vasant. I hope you all doing well. This is a very important video where I decide to start a playlist on discussing the interview questions that are asked in the companies. So in this particular video, this is a round one of Infosys interview which is asked for a mid-level engineer, three to five years of experience. So what are all the questions that have been asked? So I have a follower who is actually got a recently interviewed at Infosys. She gave me she gave me a list of questions. So I'm discussing all the questions one by one. And I've also read a lot of different uh, interview forums like Glassdoor, um, uh, Fisher Ball, and many other forums. And I've collected the combined questions, and they almost follow a similar pattern. So basically, I'm dividing into two rounds: round one and round two. So first, this will be round one where I'm discussing all the questions that are most similarly asked in Infosys interview, and this is. Most of these questions are directly derived from the recent interview. So watch the video till the end if you are attending Infosys interview or any other such type of companies. It will be definitely helpful for you. Okay? If you see me first time on the internet, like I already told, my name is Vasanth. I create content about front end interview preparation. Lot of good content I am getting every week. So please subscribe to my channel, Career with Vasanth YouTube channel. Like the video if you like. Without wasting further time, let's get started. Question number one. Uh, as you can see, I have divided the folder into Infosys round one and round two. First, I am going to discuss the round one in this video. So where we have the first question is what is the difference between flex and grid? Okay, I'm sure a lot of you whoever are React JS developers are using the flex box for almost all of your layout requirements. A very few, some time or lesser times will be using the grid boxes. Okay, so that's the reason it's asked in the interview so that you know the difference. Putting other way, the flex boxes are something that introduced by React. So grid existed part of CSS forever. Like. Even before the flexbox came, the grids were used for arranging the layouts. Okay, now let's see the some fundamental difference between flexbox and grid. So flexbox is like one-dimensional layout arranged the things in a single one-dimension. Ideal for simple layouts with horizontal and vertical alignment. It's responsive, great for navigation bars. Two-dimensional layout. Okay, so for you to get a better visual uh, visual representation, I have bought a new tab as most of you know. Let me explain how it's gonna look. Yeah. Like. So here you see, like there are two things. One is flexbox and CSS grid. Flexbox is, as you see, is a linear arrangement. Okay. So whenever you have elements that have to be arranged horizontally or vertically in a linear fashion. Okay. So in that case, you will be using the flexbox linearly. Here I mean, like usually in a two di one dimensional. So you are not seeing a lot of complex arrangements. Then you go with the flexbox. And if you have to arrange something in a very complicated manner, so in this CSS grid, so actually this is comparatively simple, but there can be way where it can become very complicated sort of a layout. That time you will be using the grid. Okay. Whenever the layouts are simple, you are going to use flexbox. Whenever layouts are complex, will you are going to use the grids. Now the question comes up: Wasn't can't we use the flexbox for whatever you are showing as a CSS grid? Definitely you can use. Okay. To achieve this particular grid, whatever I'm showing, even flex box, flex box, flex box can also be used. But the problem would be, let's say you have like one div on the top, another div on the bottom, middle two divs are there, and another div at the end. So you have to do a lot of, I don't say it may not be appropriate, but you have to do a lot of circles to get to whatever grid can achieve easily. And from performance point of view, there's not much of a difference. So don't consider flex box as the like a default option for all your layout requirement. Keep in mind you can use also use the grids. I'm sure you got now the difference between. Okay, so like the one important point I want you to remember is flexbox is for one-dimensional layout, whereas grid is for the two-dimensional. Okay, now let's go to the question number two. So question number two is what is the difference between get element by ID and get element by class name? Most of you I def I'm sure will know the answer to this. In very simple words, the get element by ID is used for. Getting a specific element on the screen, get element by class name is used to get uh, all the elements that match that particular class name. Okay, so I've written a simple example here. So if you see, uh, simple HTML is not much very complicated. So we have a h1 tag where ID is equal to heading, class equal to text. As you can see, multiple classes can have the same class name. So class is text here, whereas only one element is having a unique ID called heading. Okay. Now the question you can ask like what if wasn't can we uh, can we uh, can we not use the same ID for for multiple elements like like for example H1 I have given ID as heading can't we not use heading another place see programmatically HTML do not restrict you from using it if you wish you can use it but the whole purpose of ID should be unique identifier so use it only when you can identify an element uniquely class like I told you can use the same classes multiple places it's more like a CSS style that you created and you want to use across multiple places you can definitely use the class so you know I'm sure you got the difference between the 
uh, get element by id and get element by class name okay now let's go to the question number three what are the es6 new features okay this is very common interview question across most of the service companies and the less premium product companies okay so what are the es6 features i think i have listed some here not like all es6 features but some i have listed you can check this okay so the first one is uh, arrow functions i'm sure most of you are aware arrow functions arrow functions are very lightweight functions programmatically or performance point of view if i say it, it is not having any strategic advantage compared to a normal function but arrow functions are very concise as you can see here concise syntax for defining function the function if you define you have to define a proper variables declaration or of it whereas a, this uh, arrow functions can be just declared in one line they can be do, they can be used for doing both small and the bigger task but initially they were released in such a way you, you can do all the concise thing as a part of the arrow function remember this is very important there is no strategic advantage or from the performance point of view of using arrow function over normal function remember that very carefully second one is template literals so this is very very important lot of you might be using or some may not be using in your project so every time whenever you integrate a variable of different types into a string now you can directly access that using the dollar okay so you can even call a function if you let's say you want to call a function let's say greet you want to call right you can even have a greet getting called from here itself okay so in earlier what we used to do is we have to call a function in one line get the output then merge that output and form a bigger string right string literals actually save a lot of time actually this is available in the native ios as well the, where you can do the similar things i think it might be borrowed from there third thing is the array destructuring another favorite topic of mine but it has a little bit of a caveat let's say like user is an object okay user is an object user is an object that's having first name and last name okay where first name is x and last name is y okay so you have this in the line number above you can actually destructure it instead of you doing like user one user dot first name user dot last name you can just give user and first name and last name will be derived from this user value but there is a small problem what if user object is not having one of this thing then the program might crash so you need to handle that scenario so remember to give a default value if you are using this this is another new feature array destructuring okay La another important point is classes so classes as you know is used for the object oriented programming languages so javascript also introduced classes in es6 so now you can create classes in the same way like any other programming language you can extend a class all the inheritance polymorphism all the properties of class are now available in javascript also and uh, modules another very very important topic so where you could now use uh, combine the things that make a similar uh, impact into one module for example you have to add like all the arithmetic operation you can combine it them into one and you can export the module and you can use it like here in this case you are doing the function add export it and you import it in another js file and you are using it so you can add more function like all arithmetic operations here and you can import it in the main.js and you can use it okay so these are all the very important notable features of the ES6. There are many other, but I've given you most notable features. If you can sell these in the interview, make sure I'm, I can guarantee hundred percent you will clear that particular question. Now, before I go to next question, we have already discussed almost two to three questions, and uh, I'm sure you're liking the content. If you like the content, please like the video. It will definitely help me to get more impression, and the videos become popular. And if you, whatever you felt so far, please comment it in the comment section. If you're not still not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel, Kerala Bhavan. Awesome. Let's go to the next question. Okay, question number four. what are promises again a very very important topic from interview point of view promise basically represent the eventual completion or failure of failure of an asynchronous operation okay benefits improved code readability and maintainability by handling the asynchronous operation synchro, uh, handling the asynchronous operations chaining of promise operation can be more fluid flow error handling for potential issues during the asynchronous execution okay as you most know there are few ways to execute promises Uh, execute task asynchronously in javascript one such way is promises usually all of you might have used it with, with in case of the uh, api calls one is fulfilled another one is rejected another one is actually where the promise is actually in progress okay three states are there for the promise so only it is called as like eventual eventual completion so promise do not return like true or false immediately it will eventually complete depending on the time that is required i have written a simple javascript logic here so fetch is used to get the is here we are making an api call and we have like two dot then so as you know whenever dot then comes it's a promise expression and uh, here you are able to do the promise dot resolve 
uh, where your response or JSON you are getting, and whenever there's an error, you'll be handling the error. Make sure you know very simple, like at least this, are there even simple way to create a promise? Like const promise one is equal to new promise. So that's also a way of creating a promise. Make sure you know that simple way of creating the promise whenever interviewer asks you to do. Every topic that I'm explaining here, make sure you are able to write an example for that in the interview. Okay. Now let's go to exercise number five. Redux, again, again another super important interview topic. I don't think there's any interview that's gonna be completed now without discussing about the Redux. Okay. So because of which I've, I've just using the tab again to explain the concepts to you a little bit in depth. Let me explain the concept of Redux in depth. I'm sure most of you are already aware of it, but I'm gonna explain in a way how you could explain that in an interview. Let's say they ask you like, what is Redux explain? See, Redux in a simple words is a JavaScript state management library that is used across multiple different JavaScript frameworks, including frameworks like React, okay? It has like four major parts. One is store, okay? Store is nothing but, you can consider a store nothing but a box. Okay, a store or you can consider like a typical store that we go, which contains like all the information that is had to be stored and shared across the your, across your project. Okay, so store will have a state. Okay, that is the centralized state like as Redux, the very word says, it's a centralized state management library. All the Redux store related information, all the Redux information is stored as a part of the state. Okay, then you will have reducers. Reducers are actually pure functions. Okay pure function that accept an action and modify the state accordingly okay next we have actions actions are the one which will trigger certain things for example let's say you have a counter example where you have plus and minus and you have to whenever you click on a plus the counter value should increment right that increment and decrement happens because of the actions whenever you click on action you will dispatch an event so as you can see here uh, next is probably i'll explain in depth when i'm going with a loop okay First is app waves. Consider this like the view that you would see, whatever you would see on the screen. Something need to be happen. Like for example, in this case, you have to increment. Okay. Let's say you call increment. Whenever you whenever you are calling an increment, the dispatch is getting triggered. Okay. And once the dispatch is triggered, so you're basically dispatching an event using the help of an action. Okay. That action is hitting the reducer, which is a pure function, like I told. It knows whenever a particular action come what to do basically we'll be defining it the reducer later updates that thing and then the state is reducer basically update the state value whenever state value is updated it is propagated to everybody who is subscribed okay so if i have to explain a little bit in depth redux follows a model called pubsub model pubsub model means publish a subscriber model so whenever redux value has changed it will be publishing it and all the all the other components whichever have subscribed to that they'll be getting the updated value that's as simple as how the redux works okay so what are the pros predictable state management improved testability and scalability so these are all the uh, these are the very core importance or the advantage of using the redux okay uh, predictable predictable state management as in easier to reason about application state and track the changes okay so basically whatever the updates that you're doing you really know what exactly is getting changed what are all the cons? Boilerplate code. So only a lot of people have stopped using Redux and they're using Redux toolkit because so many files or so many code need to be written to first to start using the Redux. Second one is the complexity. Learning the Redux is not easy. I myself have struggled a lot and watched a lot of videos to understand the Redux in depth. Okay, so it is learning curve is not so easy for Redux. Once after you understand it's comparatively easy. So these are all the disadvantages of Redux. So whenever it is asked in the interview, tell one line statement, it's a state manager library for JavaScript application and used across different frameworks like React, okay? And mention about store, action, red user, and you can also mention like the dispatcher, okay? Pros of Redux and cons of Redux. You are all sorted, high chance you will clear this question as well. Now let's go to question number six. Why fetch is made inside user fit? This is not a very obvious question. Uh, it can be made in different places, but as it's asked in the interview, I'm trying to answer it. Why fetch call? Fetch call here you means basically make an API call. Why API calls are Initial API calls are at least made inside the user effect. Okay. Uh, in very simple words, uh, we have to make an API call whenever a component has to be mounted. Like during the component mount, we need to get the information from the server and we need to render on this. So the easiest way to do is using the lifecycle methods of it. Whenever a component is mounting, if there's an event that we could trigger, that is where you need to make a call. User effect is there, so we are making. That's one thing. 
There are other like minor advantages like we typically fetch data inside user effect in React because it ensures the data is fetched only when the component is mounted a dependency array changes okay so or only when dependency array changes so just keep it outside there's a chance where it can be keep making call even with the unnecessary rendering as well okay uh, for easy cleanup of the side effect let's say you have subscribed to something and you need to clean up that also can be made very easily using the user effect but it's not a very obvious question I, i'm not sure like why it was asked in the interview why fetch inside the user effect somewhere it has to be made i always uh, say this like what in java or in c why the program execution starts from main somewhere it need to start so it starts from the main so why you have to make a fetch call inside user effect somewhere i need to make it and that somewhere is ideal if i could make it during the mounting phase and using the user effect okay these are all the top six questions that are from the round one of infosys i'm sure you like the video if you like the video and you want the part two as well please mention that in the comment section all these questions will be uploaded to my github repository i'll put the link in the description section you want the round two please mention that in the comment section i'll be more than happy to make a round two as well so yeah, as you can see question is ready all i need is your support to make the round two and before i sign off see career which was on youtube channel has a lot of content i have uh, 35 plus videos about javascript interview preparation 17 plus videos about mock interview almost all sort of mock interview you can see junior mid level senior that series also i'm going to put in the description section also on the screen so please go ahead and check that out we have videos about mang into preparation we have videos about dsa preparation we have a lot of webinars that has happened in the past that videos are also available basically there is content about everything about front end career preparation and interview preparation in my channel so please make well utilization of it by watching the all the videos subscribe to my channel we, i keep uploading at least two videos every week which will definitely help you i don't make any dummy content as you already saw i try to explain as much as possible how we can clear the interview okay thank you so much for watching catch you in the next video